Let's get into routing now. Right now we have our home page, which is going to have our contact component, our contact page. And also if we scroll down, we have our home page. Now this won't really do for a real world application, right? We're not going to show all our pages on one route. Let's see how we can route two separate pages to two separate components. And the Angular CLI already created an app routing module for us. Makes this very easy. So we'll go source, app, app routing module. And we talked about this routes array a little bit earlier. Here is where we define our routes. We're going to have two routes. One is path is blank, which is the home page. Component, and notice how TypeScript automatically tells us, do you want the component property? Yes, I do. Home component. And since VS Code knows that this exists, TypeScript knows it exists, it'll help us do the import. So watch as I click this, the import automatically happens at the top of this page. There we go. And it is relative path, so it's going slash home, slash home component. And when you're doing ES6 imports, you can remove the .js or .ts. It's already implied. So this is the home component route, and then we're also going to have another one for path contact. And notice I'm not putting the forward slash there. That's totally fine. Component is the contact component. And that's it. Now our home page will show the home component, and our contact page will show the contact component. All of the backend stuff is handled by the Angular router and the Angular CLI. Now, right now, our application is still going to show contact and home on the same page. Let's go into app component.ts. Inside of our template, let's remove both of these. So now all we have is app header, router outlet, and app footer. And for the home page, we show the home component. If we go to slash contact, we get the contact component. Very nice. Now, we don't really expect our users to type in the URL every single time, so we're going to need some links in our header. Let's go over to our header component. And this uh, is going to be a little bit more HTML because of the way Bulma structures its nav bars. So we have our logo here. We're going to say here, we're going to have the menu, div class navbar menu, div class navbar start. And the reason that Bulma does navbar start is because there's also a navbar end. So if you want links on the left side versus links on the right side, I'll show you that. A class navbar item, home, and then also for contact. Now Bulma is hiding these, I think, because, yeah, because our, it's trying to be responsive and helpful, so it hides them on smaller screens. So just zoom out if you don't see yours. There we go, home and contact. Yeah, home and contact. And then if we did navbar end, it goes to the end. Very nice. So put them wherever you like. But home and contact, these are only HTML links, and they don't really do anything right now, right? We need to actually tell Angular, hey, these links are going to be routing for us. Now to do that, we're going to use what's called a router link. And this is how Angular routes to different sections. Router link, home page, router link, contact page. So now if I click home, home page, contact, home, contact, home, contact. Very nice. And notice there's no page refresh since Angular helps us make single page applications, right? Very responsive, very quick to change between routes. And that's all it takes to do routing. You just add the routes in app routing module right here, and then you add the links and that's it. Everything gets injected into that app component.ts router outlet right here. So all of our pages will have the header and the footer, and then everything else gets injected in router outlet. 